In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a trading strategy which has a very simple entry signal and it uses an indicator called Williams Percent R. It takes trades off of a daily chart of pound versus the US dollar forex pair and has a pretty decent win rate of 88%. I've kept the settings of the indicator to the standard levels, but then what I've done is I've introduced a pretty interesting trade filter which significantly increases the performance of the strategy. Firstly, I'm going to show you the signals to get in the trades using the whiteboard. Then we'll go over to the computer and we'll have a look at the results. Then I'll be to talk about the improvements and I'll show you how they actually improve the strategy and the better results. So let's go over to the whiteboard and do that now. This is a diagram of the Williams percent R indicator. So the first thing to do is apply this to your daily chart of pound dollar. Now, in some charting packages, you'll see levels from 0 up to 100. Others, you'll see from 0 down to minus 100. So depending on what charts you're using, all we're really interested in is the top 20% and the bottom 20% of the range. Now, while I think about it, I have actually done other videos which have been quite popular about using Williams Percent R and I'll link them in case you want to watch those after this one too. So once we have the Williams percent R indicator on the chart, I've mentioned I'm leaving the levels fairly standard. 80 and 20 are recognized as the oversold and the overbought levels. The length of the indicator I've left as 14 periods or 14 days in our case because we're looking at a daily chart. Now the entry signals for long trades is when the indicator drops into the lower 20% zone and the opposite for short when it goes up into the 80% zone. And what we're looking for is the crossover of the indicator. So we're looking for a bar where the indicator was showing a level above 20 and then a close of the next bar when the indicator drops below 20, that's our signal to buy. And we simply enter at market on the next bar or the open of the next bar and the same with short we want to see a level that's below 80 and then when the bar closes and it's gone above 80 that's our entry to short sell and we just short sell at the open of the next bar the exit is another very simple one one I've used quite a lot on this channel one I use quite a lot in my own trading strategies and it's Larry Williams first profitable close or first profitable open strategy and what we're going to do is, once we've got our signal to go long, so we've entered the trade, at the end of each day, so at the end of each bar, we look to see if we're in profit or not. If we're in profit, then we simply exit the trade on the open of the next bar, which is normally immediately because we're looking at a forex market. If we're showing an open loss, then we just leave the trade running and look at it 24 hours later, looking at the close of the next daily bar to see if we're in profit or not. If we're in profit then, then we just exit the trade and then wait for another one to come along. We also have a stop loss. I'm gonna start just with a wide 300 pip stop loss in this study, but we will be looking to improve that stop loss, maybe make it smaller as the development goes on. We're firstly going to look at a data sample between 2008 and the end of 2018. And then we're gonna make some adjustments, make some improvements. I'll show you that improved filter and then look at the out of sample data, which is going to be between the start of 2019 through to around about the present day. I'm going to use data till the end of April 2021 to see how those improvements have worked on the unseen or out of sample data. I find that way is a very quick way of testing whether what we've done is overfitted, over optimized, curve fitted, whatever you want to call it. It's a good way to get instant results on, or to give us a really good idea of whether or not what we've done has worked or not gonna work. And that gives us a better indication of how it will work in true future data. So now let's go over to the computer and find out how this strategy works and look at those improvements. In this first workspace, we're taking both long and short trades. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see the, the crossover of Williams percent are above the 80 level and below the 20 level. So for example, on this bar here, the Williams percent are was less than or under 80. Then on the next bar, it closed with above 80 and then 
on the open and the next bar you can see we shorted okay and then we've got the first profitable close which was the bar after we entered we actually closed in profit so we exited straight away and then we've got the Williams percent R level here, which is above 20. Next bar closed below 20. So then we've immediately bought. And then that bar closed in profit. So we exited straight away. So let's look at the results for taking both long and short trades. There's the equity curve. Looking at the close to close. It looks okay. It doesn't look anything tradable at the moment. Let's look at the individual equity curves. So that's the long curve, which looks a little bit better than what we just saw. And that's the short curve. Now the shorts certainly don't look as good as the longs, do they? And I've actually played around a little bit before making this video. And I didn't find a decent way of improving the short trade version of this strategy. For some reason, Buying pullbacks or buying into short-term weakness like we are here works far better than sh doing the opposite, so shorting into strength. So from this point on, I'm just going to concentrate on a long-only strategy. And when I introduce you to the filter that we're going to use, it makes a little bit more sense that we can stay with a long-only strategy too. So in this workspace, you can see that we've got long-only strategy. We've only got buy trades. So let's have a look at the performance report. We've already seen the equity curve from the previous workspace that looks something a little bit like that. We're making almost $20,000. 179 trades, percent profitable of nearly 83%. So at the moment it's pretty good as it is. An average trade of $110. I'd like to see that a little bit higher. And like I said earlier, we've got a fixed pip stop loss at the moment of 300 pips. That's why on our largest losing trade here, you see we've got $3,000 loss. Now the next thing that I want to do is introduce a trade filter. What I could do now obviously is start to look at the levels of the Williams percent R. We could adjust the length of the indicator. You see here I'm hovering, we're looking at 14 periods. And we could look at the level, this level 20. 20 might not be the best for the long trades. And we could even look at playing around with the 80 level for the short trades if we were to continue and produce the short trade strategy too. But that's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do for filtering these trades is use something that I have done before and what I do quite often. It's an idea, again, from Larry Williams. I've got three ideas with this strategy, all from Larry Williams. We're using his indicator, we're using his idea of the first profitable close for the exit, and now I'm going to use one of his ideas for a filter. So a lot of credit goes to Larry for this strategy. And the filter, we're going to be looking at trading day of the month. Now if you haven't come across trading day of the month or TDOM, what we're looking at is are there certain days in the month where long trades are better than short trades? And yes, there are for most instruments, and especially pound dollar, I've found. So typically, there are up to 23 trading days in a month. We're not talking about calendar, so we're excluding the weekends. We're looking at just the trading days, so up to 23 in some months. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a test which I've done, I've programmed, quite a simple little code which basically it buys on the start of trading day one and then exits at the end of the day and then it buys again on day two and exits at the end of the day and what I'll do is I'll show you a bar graph which plots that data which shows you over the test period over the period from 2008 through to the end of 2018 shows you how the markets behave. It shows you whether there are strong days in particular months or weak days. And from that, we can then apply a trade filter to all different strategies. Um, we're going to apply it to this one using the Williams percent R indicator. So let's have a look at the bar graph to show you the behavior of pound dollar for the trading day of the month. So looking at this bar graph here, you can see on the x-axis, we've got one, two, through two, 23 and they're each trading day of the month and the bars are actually net profit so how much profit 
each trading day produced had we bought at the start of the day and then sold at the end of the day. And we can clearly see that there are stronger and weaker parts of the month. From day three through to day seven, so these four bars here, are they're all bearish, they're all very weak. And coming from day eight through to 13, 14, are quite strong. And then we get a weak bit again before the end of the month. So you can clearly see that uh, this market does have a strong bias for the downside start of the month and then a little bit of strength towards the middle and then kind of hasn't made its mind up too much towards the rest of the month. So that's just a demonstration to show that these markets do have biases and they do behave in particular ways, whether it be trading day of the month or maybe month of the year or even during certain hours of the day or days of the week. There's lots of different biases within these markets. And doing this sort of study allows us to have a look and find out how we can profit using these biases. So now we're back on the chart and we're in this third workspace. Now, what I've programmed into the strategy is to only take the trades if this crossover of the Williams percent R indicator occurs between a certain day of the month and the later certain day of the month. So we could say only take trades if they occur between day 10 and day 15, for example. But we're actually going to test that. So we can actually run an optimization. And that's what I've done. So if we look at this report, we can see I've called this input my LE day. That means my long entry day. So if we use day one, that means that we can take all the trades during the week. And you'll recognize these values at this 110 average trade, 19,000 profit. That's what we've seen because that's taking all trades. And you can see the total trade number is 179, which is the most on this list. So scanning down these numbers, we can quickly see that trading day four makes most net profit. And it has a very good average trade. The highest average trade is further down here, taking trades from trading day 18. Look at all the trades it cuts out. It only makes 31 trades, not 179, which is all of them. So I'm going to use trading day four. So now we're only going to take trades if that crossover of the Williams percent R to below 20 occurs between trading day four and the end of the month. Looking at the performance report, we can see we've got 155 trades, percent profitable, 85. The average trade's gone up to 188. We're making a lot more net profit now at $29,000. And the equity curve is probably nicer. So the next obvious thing to do is look at when to stop taking these trades. So looking at the, the towards the end of the month, when should we stop? and stop trading for the month. Well, we've run an optimization for that as well. So looking at the results, we can see that if we stop taking trades, trading day one, two, three, four, we're not gonna get any trade because remember, we're only starting to trade from day four onwards. So looking at the best net profit, we look like we've got best net profit ending on trading day 15. And we've got a very good average trade too. In fact, that's almost the best, disregarding these early ones with only a few trades. So it's quite clear that trading day 15 should be quite a good one to use. And the percent profitable has gone right up too. So let's have a look at the performance report using trading day 4 and 15. So here's the equity curve. It's it's still okay and it's quite good recently. So that's good. Clearly making new highs right up to the end of this data. We're making a few extra thousand on the net profit. And what we've just seen, we've got 107 trades, 88% win rate, bigger average trade at $314 now. Next, we're going to look at whether that 300 pip stop loss is optimal or not. Maybe we can make it a little bit smaller. But before we do that and look at the results, if you're enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up now and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one. So in this workspace, I've run an optimization on the stop loss and I've looked at stop losses between zero and 500 pips. And we make most money 
using no stop loss whatsoever. Uh, you can see we've got 39,000, we've got a large average trade. However, look at the maximum intraday drawdown, a drawdown $52,000. Nobody's going to want to trade with that. Currently, we're using the 300 pip stop loss with a drawdown of almost $9,000, and we know our net profit and our average trade values. But looking at the combination of a low intraday drawdown, the best average trade, the best net profit, I think quite a nice compromise is about here, which is 320 pips. So unfortunately, we haven't been able to go that much smaller as much as I would like to. We could perhaps sacrifice a bit of net profit and an average trade value and move down to something like a 200 pip stop loss. We do get a little bit less intraday drawdown as well. But for now, I think I'm just going to keep it at the 320 pips. So we select that and see how that changes the equity curve. Probably not a lot. And there's the equity curve with our 320 pip stop loss. And it's almost identical. I didn't expect it to change very much just with an extra 20 pips on the stop loss. The next thing I want to look at is the exit. I've mentioned already that we're exiting if at the end of the day we're showing a profit we get out. If we're not showing a profit then we stay in the trade. But perhaps we can find a better level than saying are we in profit or not. Perhaps a better level might be are we 50 pips in profit then exit. If we're not in 50 pips or more then stay in the trade. And I've run an optimization on that, so we can have a look, see if there is a better result than just using in profit or not in profit. So this optimization shows, I've called it minimum first profit, and zero shows what we've already got, and that's we exit if we're in profit more than zero. And then I've gone all the way to $3,000 just at the bottom of the page where you, you can't quite see but that's equivalent to 300 pips. So 100 would be 10 pips. So we've gone in 10 pip increments all the way to 300 pips. And looking down the results, we have got some much bigger net profit at like 230 pips here. But then our max intraday drawdown has gone right up to 14,500. Looking at a compromise of not letting this drawdown get too large. I actually quite like this thousand dollar or a hundred pips because the max drawdown is still only 11,300 but our average trade's gone from 329 to 483 and we're making almost 39,000 rather than 35,000. So I'm going to select using 100 pips and see how that looks. And I think our equity curve actually looks a little bit nicer. We already know we're making 38,000 and the total trade analysis is quite similar, although it has dropped our percent profitable quite a lot now because we're holding out for that extra profit. So to clarify, what we're saying is at the end of the day, we need to see if we're in 100 pips or more profit, then we'll exit. If we're in profit that's less than 100 pips or we're negative, then we keep the trade open. But in all honesty, I think using 100 pips or zero as we had it to start with, I think they both work quite well. It's probably personal preference. If you wanted better quality trades, then you might use the 100 pips. If you wanted a higher win rate, then you might use the zero pips like we had previously. And the last thing I really want to do is look at that out of sample data. Now, we've got data from 2008 through to 30th of April. 2021. So we've got over two years, well two years and four months worth of unseen or out of sample data, including all of 2019, all of 2020 and four months of 2021. So the strategy we're looking at now is using the, the zero for the minimum profit for the exit. So if we're in profit, we're going to exit. If we're not in profit, we stay in the trade. We've still got that high, in fact that's gone up slightly to 89%, which is good. We've got a decent average trade still. We're using that 320 pip stop loss. And we can see we are making new highs. 
uh, made new highs at the start of 2020. Uh, then we dropped a little bit and it's climbing back up. Looking at the annual period analysis, we can see 2019 made money, 2020 didn't. 2020 was a funny year, remember? 2021, we're making money already, just taking two trades within those first four months, and both of them were profitable. Out of interest, let's have a look at removing those trading day of the month filters. Remember, we're only taking the buy signals between trading day four and 15. Let's remove those and see how what the effect is. So we're going to take trades from trading day 1 to 23. And we can see actually 2020 was a better year. 2021, we've made more money, we've taken a few more trades. Let's just look at the equity curve. And the equity curve is not as smooth, is it? We did have quite a big drawdown here and we didn't make as much money. So I like using the trading day of the month filters. So let's put the filters back in and then let's have a look at that 100 pips for the minimum profit. So we're going to take trades from 4 through to 15 and then for our minimum profit we want to be a thousand dollars in profit or a hundred pips in profit before we take the exit. And we've got a very decent net profit now, 47,000. Our equity curve is really smooth, even in the out of sample. With the green dots we can see we're making new highs all the way, so that's, that's really quite nice. Looking at the total trade analysis, very large 496 average trade. Remember, we do have a lower percent profitable. We know that already from looking at the earlier results. But in fact, I'm quite impressed with that equity curve. That looks really nice. So I would say either use the, the 100 pips or just the zero, and they both seem to be working well. I mean, this 100 pips is actually working better during the out of sample as far as I'm concerned. In conclusion then, we can see that buying short term dips or buying weakness in pound dollar on the daily chart has worked well over those years worth of the test data. We've discussed the trading day of the month idea and we've used it as a filter to improve upon the signals taken from Williams percent R indicator. And then we've also looked at adjusting the exit, adjusting the minimum profit, and realized that we can increase the net profit and the average trade, although it does decrease the percent profitable. It all swings and roundabouts. It's personal preference, what you'd like to actually trade. The trading day of the month filter can actually be applied to any strategy. In fact, I've actually made strategies purely just buying at certain times of the month and selling at other times of the month and shorting certain times of the month, covering other times of the month, or we can use it to filter an already existing strategy like we've seen here with the signals from the Williams Percent R. I encourage you to try it out. Have a look at some of your own trading strategies. If you have strategies with signals you know, like the Williams Percent R, have a look at testing out different trading day of the month, see if there's a period where those signals work much better. If you have any questions or maybe suggestions about what I've just demonstrated to you, then please leave them in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and make sure you look out for the next one. But until the next one, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.